gentlemen, thanks for joining me today. Well, something kind of odd about this South Bend light. Uh, it didn't come with a threading dot. There wasn't even a place to mount it. Uh, apparently, uh, South Bend offered it as an option. Uh, it's kind of hard to thread without a threading dial, but I know it can be done, but I, I can't imagine why they didn't include it. But anyway, uh, we're going to make a threading dial today. So, let's get on with it. Okay, I'm getting ready to cut Acme threads on this uh, 7 8 bar here, which is the same as my lead screw. Uh, 8 threads per inch. Uh, I've shimmed my cutter at a very slight angle so that it matches the pitch of this thread. Uh, that way I can leave more support underneath the cutting edge. Uh, I haven't had much luck cutting Acme threads, so let's see how this goes. No idea if that's <laughs> the right amount of hook angle on the cutting edge. It'll be rotating this way and it'll create a that angle there being off center will create a little hook. We'll see. Okay, this, this may never work. It kind of worked. <laughs> kind of sort of. According to the instructions, this disc is what I need to make 32 slots or 32 positions. And I used the 16 hole ring. Like I said, this is the first time I've used it, so... Okay, this little gizmo goes right there. This goes right here. Supposedly. Okay, I got this clip on. It's just a poorly made clip. It adds friction to this, makes it so this will move together, but this will move separately. Okay, this has to go in the 16 hole, 16 hole ring. This needs to go up high enough to get over there. Oh yeah, no problem. Okay, here's the example it gives, and they're using a 17-hole pattern as an example. But in my example, I'm going to use a 32-hole. So I want to put n in the place, or 32 in the place of n. So 90 divided by 32. Okay. 
which is 28 or 2.8 one two five eight one two five. If you look at there, eight point one two five is thirteen sixteenths. And here in the book, they give you three columns: is one, two, three, and right here is these columns right here are the number of holes you want. So if you look at 32, want 32 holes. I use the 16 hole uh, pattern on the indexing ring. And it's 2 and 13 sixteenths. That means I got to go 2 turns and 13 holes. Which is really weird, but that's how they work. The uh, rotary table is 90 to 1. That's why you got to do that math. If you look right there, there's 15, I mean 16 right there. 17, 18, 19, or 20. So for a 32 hole pattern, I got to be in the 16 ring, which is right there. I put this side of this, uh, I don't know what you want to call that place marker I guess and then I go 13 holes past 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, uh, it's not going to work Okay, I miscounted. It, there's exactly 13. That's as far as this little device will go. So, in other words, I'm, I'm up against the pin right here, and then there's 13 holes all the way around until I can get in this pin right here. Wait a minute. So it goes... One, two... And 13. Right there. One, two, and 13. This screw right here just makes these two brass pieces stay together. Well, I guess I'm ready to go. Okay, I need to duplicate the angle of these threads. There's probably a mathematical way to do it, but this works good for me, I think. I turned a uh, reduced section on the back of that that fits into the number two taper. It's just It'll get snug when it's drawn in. That was kind of a trial and error thing. And I put a long carriage bolt in there. And I'm going to bolt that to my turntable. And this is where I'm going to cut the gear surface. Sticks out quite a ways because I've got to clear the, uh, the quill on my, on my mill. Okay, I've got kind of a crazy setup here. I've got my uh, rotary table set up at an angle. I put a piece of sh uh, a shim under it, like an eighth inch, and that duplicated the angle of the uh, pitch on, on the uh, leaf screw. And here is a saw, and that's about the width of one the peak of one Acme thread. I think it'll be alright.
about right. Well, I don't have a real good feeling about this. Well, I think it'll work. It's not as deep as I would like it. In other words, those teeth are... The blade should have been a little bit wider. Yeah, good deal. Looks like it came out... The, the slope on the cut came out about right. I was a little concerned about gripping those teeth where the, if the jaws would grip it evenly. Looks like it's doing pretty good though. Okay, I just threaded that about a quarter inch deep. locked on there. That's to hold the gear on. Uh, it's because I forgot to put, leave a hub on the gear. Could have left a hub there and put a set screw on it and been just fine. But this works good. I guarantee that won't move. Okay, I got my indexing wheel attached. I got a separate video on that. And I'm going to use it to make my scribe lines on my dial. Okay, I think what I want is two, four long lines and four short lines. It's got it. I'll just take some uh, emery cloth to that and shine it up 
and maybe stamped some numbers in it. I'm not sure. I might just put colored lines in there. Yeah, I'll take some finer emery cloth to it, shine it up. Looks good. Well, I'm not sure where this scrap came from, but it's well on the way to becoming a, a threading dial. It'll be the housing for that. I'm good with that. Hmm. Quite a bit's got to come off of there. 24. I'll cut that off of there and then face the end. Probably better tighten that up on there, make sure it rotates. 
free drive trucks are not accurate. Now I gotta trim part of that off and shape the outside. Shaping the outside is gonna be kind of hard. Hard to get things round and smooth on a metal lathe. But I'm sure it'll come out looking somewhat like a threading dial. Okay, now I'm going to mill part of that off. So that it'll so that the it'll expose part of the gear to uh, mesh with the lead screw. And I'm going to use that right there, a bull nose mill. Okay. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Definitely enough exposure for the lead screw. Now I've got to figure out how to mount it to the lathe. Probably have to mill a slot right here and put a pin in there. I hate to discolor this thing after I get it all shiny, but...
Well, there it is. Tomorrow, after the paint dries a little better, I'll mount it on the lathe. I've got a little pin in there with a point on it. That'll help me locate this, I hope. I hate drilling a hole in my lathe. No other way to mount it though. This is a blue Loctite, removable. I believe that'll get it. Looks like it's mashing good. Well, that about wraps up the uh, threading dial build. Learned a lot about the rotary table and indexing disc. Uh, I know I did anyway. Uh, hopefully you did too. Uh, anyway, thanks for joining me and uh, be sure and subscribe.